Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Howdy Ranger Danger fans, Michael here. Uh, just a quick kind of note about this episode. Uh, about, I think, five minutes into the intro, we suffered some pretty major equipment failure. Uh, batteries dying and mics not working and all kinds of things. So uh, everything after that is just recorded with the onboard mic on my laptop, which is look not ideal, but uh, we sorted it all out. So all the other episodes from here on out will be back to the usual nice little sound it's just one kind of bum one we didn't want to re-record it because that would literally be the worst thing in the world uh anyway i'll let you get back to it and uh enjoy this episode lights camera action is the title of today's episode of mighty morphin power rangers they'll be watching on the podcast which is mighty morphin ranger danger that's what you're listening to right now with me that's matt Michael's here. Howdy, folks. And today our guest is you guys, because you're always in our heart, and also because all our guests fell through. We tried a couple, didn't we? We did. It didn't really work out for us. No. But we know you're always with us in spirit, and you're very polite and you don't talk while we're talking. So thank you. Never interrupt us? No. No. We appreciate it. It'd be nice if you contributed a little. Look, we're trying to compliment the people. Oh, yeah, you guys are great. There we go. Send us an email. Yeah. Do it. We love those. Speaking of, Matt, where can they do that? Uh, we have an interweb email address where you can send us electronic mails. That's rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. If you want to check out our website on the internet, just point your clicker cursor to www.rangerdangerpodcast.com. If you want to send us a Twitter tweet, you can head to twittertweet.com and search for at rangerdcast. Uh, we're also on Facebook and iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube. Uh, tune in. Uh, not LinkedIn, definitely not LinkedIn. Not on LinkedIn. We do have a shop though, rangeaidpodcast.com slash shop, where you can buy mugs and all sorts of fun things. Buy a mug. I think Michael wants you to buy a mug. All right, so Michael, we're going to watch Lights, Camera, Action today. Before we do that though, there's some things we need to discuss, isn't there? I think there are some things we need to discuss. So this week in our time, it yes. is San Diego Comic Con. Woo woo. Yeah, well, not, not really for us. I no. mean, we're not at San Diego Comic Con. And it's really, there's not much comic news that comes out of Comic Con, really. It's hard to tell. There's so much, like, stuff, stuff that's going on. I do but feel like New York Comic Con is where it's at. These yeah, days. I think so. San Diego is because it's in LA, it's got all the entertainment kinds of stuff. Yeah, San Diego. No. Is in California. Yeah. It's not in LA, it's south of. Yeah. It's not far, I don't think. I think it's like a couple of hours. Yeah, that. Sydney isn't in Canberra. No, but Canberra is close to Sydney. I would say Canberra is in Sydney. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You I would, would. You'd never say that. I would say that. No. But I don't I don't respect Canberra at you, all. You looked so. into the lie place when you said that. You looked What's, away. Where's the lie place? It's about there. Do you we, guys can't see where I'm pointing, but it's... I can't even see where you're... You're just pointing at the air. Yeah, that's where you, that's where you look. That's, that's where the, the lies are. are. Like, there in particular? Yeah. So, if I'm in Canberra, say... No, it moves relative to you. Oh, okay. So, if you're right. in Canberra, not in Sydney. Right. The lie place isn't... In the middle of your place. No. That would be weird. That Imagine would be if weird. it was like Mecca. Everybody, whenever they were lying, pointed directly at the lie <laughs> place. That would be very sad if our, our house was the house of lies. Yeah. Yeah. Comic-Con. Yes. yes. Uh, so, two things that are probably important. I love two things. I'll start with the less exciting one for you first. Okay. Die Ranger on DVD. That's pretty exciting for me. I know it is. I mean, it's company president Greystone. Yeah. On press disc form. Yeah. That's what I want from my life. It is. So I'm down. Uh, so I guess Zoe Ranger sold well enough for Shout Factory that they're willing to give another one a try. Which is great news. I assume they've gone to Die Ranger partially because it's the next one in order and partially because they can sell it with a great big white Ranger on the front of the box. That'd help, yes. Um, because after that, it suddenly becomes... Look at a bunch of guys dressed like ninjas. Well, no, it's look, it's the alien rangers. Those guys that you have no strong feelings about. <laughs> I, I, alien rangers is such a weird little... Uh-huh. Like, yeah. ten episodes, they didn't give them a whole season. Oh, it, it's so far from a whole season. I've never seen any of it, so when we get up to that, that'll be exciting. Yeah. 
And the thing is, it's not even one off. Like, they kind of stick around as characters for a little while. Really? Yeah. Huh. They're a part of the universe. It's not like a little side thing. Like, it's quite integrated. Interesting. It's not like Master Rider when Master Rider shows up and then is never mentioned again. I'm excited. We're doing that later this year, is that three parter? Oh, really? Yeah. That'll be fun. That's exciting. We might have to watch some Master Rider after that to see what. Yeah, we're going to watch some Furbers. So okay, let's let's take a break. What the fuck is fur Furbus? Furbus? Fur, I'm pretty sure it's Furbus. You know that weird chip monster. So if you're Australian, you'll know. Yes, that there was a weird chip guy. Who, what was the chip monster? I don't know. He had a name. I'm gonna have to look up chip monster now. That's, and there's, that don't need to be in the show notes. Yeah, but he was like. If you see Bath Rider, he was like a slightly bigger Furbus. <laughs> Just like a weird, furry, like very squat creature that speaks and squeaks and scurries a lot. Basically. And was he like there's Zordon? Oh no. Or he, he was, was he like a mascot? Mascot, basically. From memory, he came with Mask Rider to Earth. So Mask Rider isn't from Earth? No, he's from Ignoit, where Alpha Pipe is from. That's the link that links the two universes together. You look... Oh, what's the expression on your face? I don't, I'm not sure. I was just expecting him to be a dude who got a belt. A dude who got a belt? Yeah. No, he's an alien. Like a magic belt, not like just, oh, I've gone to a jag and bought a belt. Like, No, he's uh, like an alien prince, and he comes to Earth with Furbus for some reason, and he like lives with a family. Is there like adopted son? Uh, and it's, it's kind of like Alf... Except Alf is a dude who can turn into a, like a space ninja. But Alf is also a small furry Alf. There's a second Alf, yeah. But, and yeah, I guess he's more... Furbus is more like Alf. It's really like Alf if Alf came with a space ninja. Yeah. Rather than if Alf was a space ninja with another smaller Alf. That's a pretty good description, Master Rider, yeah. Do either of them eat cats? I don't think so. I know Furbus has some weird habits that causes hygiene around the house. Of course he does. You know. Okay, we're definitely going to have to watch some Mars Rider because this sounds It's pretty insane. weird. Yeah. And we've watched this show for 92 episodes. It's particularly weird because, like, you know Carmen Rider vaguely. Vaguely, right? yeah. It's, it's like, just dudes who get belts. Basically. Yeah. And I'm not sure what made them go, okay, we've got Carmen Rider. Now we need to stitch, like, a family comedy <laughs> but kind of skewed kids onto Carmen Rider. You know? It's like, what would happen if we mix Full House and Carmen Rider? And it's like, you'd get a weird bastard show that probably won't last as long because it's weird and not in the good way. Well, I mean, we're certainly not celebrating the 20th season of Master Rider. No. So, huh. which is sad. Huh. Can you imagine if, like, two-thirds of the way through Full House, House is run, the dad just became Carmen Rider? Is the dad John Stamos? No. Or is John Stamos the uncle? I can't remember. I've never seen an episode of Full House. Or is it Bob Saget? Yeah, he's on that show. I think he was the dad. Okay. I don't know anymore. My life is filled with confusion. All right, well, certainly about Full House. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think anyone's coming to this podcast expecting well-rounded Full House opinions. I feel like if those people are here, we're letting them down, though. You have to go watch some Full House. If you have strong feelings about Full House, please send us an email. Tell us things about Full House. We can call our podcast Glass Half Full House. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Once again, I can't read the expression on your face. So, Die Ranger coming to DVD. That'll be very exciting when that happens. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. There's a second thing. There's a second thing. Yes. Legacy Thunder Megazord. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Clearly. I think everybody everybody gathered that. I think people knew that would happen, though. Like, oh. People who are fans of this show know that I was pretty psyched yeah. for this occurrence. So, yeah. And it's been pretty likely for a long time now. Yeah, especially it? when the Legacy Tiger Sword came out. It seemed... I bought the Legacy Tiger Sword yesterday. Oh, it happened. It's coming you did from it? the internet. Cool. Well, now that there's a Thunder Megazord as well, I've just got to have all of them. Yeah, I mean, if you have a Thunder Megazord and you don't have a White Tiger Sword, you can't make the Mega White Tiger Sword. No, and then you won't be able to shoot a flying, firing, firing, fire a fire phoenix through trauma. And that's what you should want out of your life. Oh, that's basically all I want out of my life. Yeah. So that's Comic Con. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Legacy Thunder Megazord is January next year, apparently. Yeah. So in about August, when the one we've ordered. Arrives finally arrives in this country. 
uh, we'll be sure to tell you all about it. Yep. Cool. I didn't do one of those unboxing videos that the kids are like. I don't get it. Do you get it? I, do, I guess I do get it. It's like getting stuff, but cheap. Yeah. And I think, especially for people like us here in Australia, when you often just don't get things. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go to the shops and just buy a Power Rangers thing? Yeah. So, I know that some of the Dino Charge cast are at Comic-Con. Did anything All of the that? Dino Charge cast are at Comic-Con. Well, all of the current Dino Charge cast. Yeah. Uh, they've done a panel that I have not seen yet. Right. Uh, all looks very exciting. It sounds like the feeling will be that they might skip Power Trangers That's and right. go straight to Ninjas again. Yeah. Um, trains aren't as big a thing in America and... I don't think they'd sold hugely well, but I'm not sure what the deal is there. Plus, one of the Megazords looks like it has a giant erection. I mean, that's all I want from this show. But... <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> no, yeah, look, it's, it's sounding more and more like they'll probably skip it and go to Ninjas, which they can afford to do now that they're doing two years out of a season. That's true. Um, but it's interesting in that, you know, in the next couple of years, we might see them skipping... They're either going to skip or they're going to fall behind. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what they do there. I can understand why they're doing it. It does give them the flexibility to dodge any of the hard ones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's got multiple, you know, the first advantage is you get 40 episodes out of your 52 episodes that you're buying, yep. which is much better value than getting 20 episodes out of it. It lets you make seasons that are as long as the seasons used to be and do all of the things you used to do rather than try and cram everything in. Yeah. But it is going to be strange when there's not just a couple of seasons that have been skipped, but a whole mess of them. Yeah, but I guess, Drew, if they get themselves to a point where there's two in a row that are really hard, they might be like, all right, I guess we'll go back and do trains, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would be There's no reason for them not to, necessarily? No. So, yeah, yeah, interesting. I guess if there's more Dino Charge news, you might have more next week, if anything yeah, comes out that's of interest. If everything... Yeah. Yeah. We should tell them about my Gold Ranger maybe dream. Oh, yeah. So, Dino Charge has got a Gold Ranger. Yeah. Officially, they have not announced who the Gold Ranger is. Uh, there's been lots of speculation over who that character could be and all of that. I'm certain I've seen a picture of a guy in costume as the Gold Ranger with the other Rangers in costume. Absolutely 100% certain. Except? Except that photo does not exist on the internet. Yeah. So, I think that Michael just had a dream about it. Which is not impossible, because last night I also had a Power Rangers dream. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, I know. And as I said to Michael, it's far more likely that he had a Power Rangers dream than an uh, image of the Gold Ranger went up on the internet and then was somehow removed entirely from the internet. Yeah. That's not how that works on the uh, internet. Things just don't go away. So, I guess we'll know in August 29th is the release comeback date of... Dino Charge. And shortly after that will be the comeback date of Ranger Danger Dino Charge. Yes, I guess August 29th it'll be a very early September for Ranger Danger Dino Charge, but yep. we'll figure that out and we'll have more news when that's nearly happening. It'll be good to be in your ears twice a week. Yeah. Again. It's oh, where I like to be. It's yeah. warm. Warm? Yeah. Is it warm? In, yeah. I mean, more than outside of there it is. I guess my ears are pretty warm. Get out of your ears, Michael. <laughs> We're going to go watch Lights, Camera, Action the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode, and then we will return to you and get back in your warm ears in just a moment. Alright, so we just watched Slides Camera Action. Michael, imagine you're a television producer. Yes. The show you're doing is going to do a clip show. Yeah. How many different episodes do you think you should pull, pull clips from? What's the optimal number? One. I don't think it's one. How sure are you on that? Pretty sure. Well, I feel you like did one... not produce this episode of Power Rangers, Matt. I feel like one's not the right number. It's actually so few clips that it feels like the goal wasn't to do a clip show. It's, yeah. It can't have been because they burnt footage from another new episode. Let's, let's cover lights, camera, action, yeah? Yep. Okay, so it starts off with Aisha giving a report, which I guess is just how episodes start now. Yeah. Uh, I just giving you a report about television yep. and how great television is. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's just, it's not even close to subtle. It's no. amazing. And I just giving her a report on this, like, old television. Yeah. Not like 1990s old, like 1950s old. 
Something amazing happens. She's talking about a guy in the history of television called General David Sarnoff. Yeah. As she says his name, the writer of the episode's name appears under her. Daniel Sarnoff. What? His grandson. Really? Yeah. That's pretty So cool. they went, right, we've got to do an episode about how television is good because people are starting to get worried about this show. Yeah. So let's just get that guy who knows stuff about television, maybe? Yeah. That did not work out. No. Me. This is a really bad episode. So <laughs> I just, they're talking about the power of TV and then Miss Apple, we asked Bob and Skull a question about it, like who was the father of television? And Bob says Captain Kangaroo, yeah, which is a dated reference for them. Yes, Bob and Skull would not be like familiar with Ca- Captain Kangaroo. No, of like, course not. I barely am. It's just yeah, bad writing. Uh, they get that wrong, and then I think it's Adam answers the question correctly, like a nerd. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, Adam's a nerd, but he's yeah. a cool nerd, not like Billy, who's a nerd nerd. That's true. Uh, and after that, Ms. Appleby says that tonight on television, a very rare and exciting event is happening. The Power Rangers will be on TV to speak about the benefits of education. So, look forward to that, kids. Okay, I've got like five questions, yeah, but let's just go first. Yeah. If you were a kid, would yeah. that not be the most disappointing thing the Power Rangers could do on television? Definitely. Second. Yeah. How did they arrange for the Power Rangers to be on television? That's one of those really weird things where, like, in the past, the Power Rangers have seemed to have a completely, like, we don't communicate with the media. No. We we just keep ourselves completely separate. And then they just rock up on a talk show? Yeah. It's like, how, yeah, how did they set that up? Like, they say mm-hmm. that they're worldwide ambassadors for education with some... International group education group or something. Which maybe the real Power Rangers even were. Possibly. I don't think there's an international education, whatever. But there could be, like, a foundation that sure. gives a shit about kids learning stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, like, did they call Alpha? Is there, like, a phone number in the command centre that you can ring and get, like, a deal to talk to the Power Rangers? If so, why is this what must be at least a year after the Power Rangers have started showing up? Why is this the first time anyone's done that? Lots of questions. Question no, three, how did they decide which show they were going to go on? <laughs> is this, this appears to be a local Angel Grove show, but surely they'd go on... Well, it is national television, they say, several times. But it's in Angel Grove with a very small studio audience, it's with just... a guy that does not have, like, just the charisma of a TV host. And I have one last question. Yeah. Why would anybody believe that those are the real Power Rangers? Yeah. Again, no reason to. Although they do teleport away at the end. Oh, sure. But if you were a kid up yeah. until that point, yeah. you'd be absolutely certain that they just got five people and put them in suits. Definitely. There's no... No. Anyway, yeah. so they're on the Harvey Garvey show. Yep. He feels like local cable access Letterman. He does. Yes. He probably is. In fact, he feels a lot more like Craig Kilborn. Yeah, sure. I'd say, especially for that time frame. Um, but yeah, definitely like cheap knockoff dime store Craig Kilborn. Yeah. Um, in terror voice. <laughs> Adam doesn't like cameras. Yes. And when he says that, he walks to like the end of the <laughs> corridor and looks like pensively up to the corner of the hallway. He's looking at, at the high spot. Yeah, exactly. It's weird. And that does not come up again in the episode. That's not a plot Not really. Point. Like, the monster appears, and, and spoilers, the monster is a camera. Yeah. And he goes, I told you I didn't like cameras. And I keep a great job. None of the cameras you've dealt with before in your life have been monsters. No. And it does not affect no. anything no. at any point. So Bob and Skull have a plan. Yeah. They're going to unmask them on air. Yeah. Why they think that that will work, given the number of times that they failed to unmask them just around town. And that, and that would involve them overpowering the Power Rangers. Yes. <laughs> like, and, like, first of all, they're the Power Rangers. At least two of them have swords. Yeah. You don't have any reason to believe that they won't stab you rather than let you take their masks off. No. <sighs> it's dumb. Everything about this episode is so dumb. Lord Zed also <laughs> has a plan. Yes. He's just going to kill them on air. No, what he's going to do is get Goldar to kidnap the Rangers and replace them with evil Power Rangers that will go on the show and spread an evil message on air. Now, 
Well, that's certainly the original plan. Yeah. Uh, it's not a terrible plan. Yes, it is, because it relies on Golda in a handful of places. Okay, okay. Other than the part where it relies on Golda, yeah. which is always a bad way to start a plan, it's not a terrible plan. Yeah, again, but it's a good goal, but a good plan gets you to the good goal. Sure. You know, and uh, yeah, his plan is to send Golda and a handful of buddies to the park and overpower the Rangers, which never works, even when they're not morph. The first thing the Power Rangers do is morph and then just beat the shit out of the putties. Yeah, so Golda and the putties come down yeah. to kidnap them. The Power Rangers, it's not even a particularly long fight. No. Nah. They basically just. They don't look like they're trying. <laughs> they just wipe the floor with these putties. And Gola bitches out yep. very, very quickly. Even by Gola standards, he gives up and goes home. I understand that this show does not want to get rid of Golda yeah. because he's a useful tool. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a useless tool. I would just, I would really have a lot more respect if they just decided, no, you know what? The Power Rangers are going to beat Golda now yeah. and we're going to replace Golda with like someone else. Yeah. It just, because Golda is just a nothing now. Such a nothing. There's no point in being on the show other than to talk to Lord Zed. He's not a threat. No. You know. Yeah, he's the worst. Yeah. Uh, so, Gola returns to the moon, tail between his legs. He's like, well, I'm sorry, that didn't work out as planned, because it was never going to work out as planned. And Lord Zed goes, oh, well, I don't really have time to make evil rangers now, and you didn't kidnap them, so I guess I'm just going to make a monster. Yeah. Which, you know, I guess you fall back on the classics. Yeah. Although the classics have never worked. <laughs> never, ever worked. Uh, there's a lot of... Terrible TV jokes. Yeah. Um, to the point where, like, the Rangers don't know they're on a TV themed episode of a TV show. <laughs> but especially Tommy is really like, you know, it's time to lights, camera, leap into action or whatever. I don't think he says that. He's just, I'm pretty sure at the end of the episode, when they're in the command center, he says, lights, camera, we're morphing into action. That's pretty terrible. That is pretty terrible. And the, the episode is filled with shit like that. Uh, so yeah, they defeat the putties and they go to this TV show. Yep. Where they flip individually onto the set as fireworks go off. It's a tiny audience. Yeah. There couldn't be more than like... 15 people. 15, maybe 30 people yeah. at most. It's just... You'd have thought more Angel Grove people would have shown up to see the Power Rangers. Yeah. Anyway... So they flip in, there's fireworks everywhere, it's super obnoxious. And it gets even more obnoxious when the other five rangers sit on a long couch, Tommy gets his own couch, sits on that, and then puts one of his legs up, <laughs> kind of leans it's back. It's incredible. It's, it's genuinely amazing. It's, it's so... If you didn't know this was an episode of the show, you'd absolutely believe that this was something that had happened at some point in the mid-90s on a crappy television show. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it gets even worse when Tommy tells everyone that the only way to be cool is to stay in school. Yeah. They talk about how to be a power engineer, you have to have a good education. Yeah. And then, like, they talk about how being smart has helped, and I'm like, okay, that's true-ish. And then Aisha goes, yeah, and good grades help too. And I was just like, they're, like, there's no, you have to sit a test. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, all you have to do is wear the right colour clothing in Angel Grove when someone else has to go somewhere. And be good at punching. Yeah. Really? Yep. Good at punching definitely helps, but Billy wasn't good at punching. No. You don't have to be good at punching. That's true. There's not a lot of entry requirements, really. <laughs> it's basically just luck. Yeah. It's not... They're not making a good argument for it. No. They're just shouting slogans and everyone's cheering. So they do then try to make a good argument. Yeah. And Billy and Kimberly tell the story of that time they fought Pudgy Pig. Which is hilarious because those two are the only, like, two of those six that were there. Yeah, which is, I thought, like, I was impressed that they didn't just have Adam tell that story yeah. and think no one cares. Yeah. They did luck into having the right two people tell that story. Yeah. And, yeah, so they tell the story about how they had to be clever because they remembered that he probably didn't like spicy food. It's and, Pudgy Pig, we should say. Oh, Pudgy Pig! Yeah. I missed Pudgy Pig. It is good seeing Pudgy Pig again. Because they talk about Pudgy Pig, and then while they're doing that, there's a montage of stuff that's played as if the show had footage of that. I mean, my assumption there was that 
it's just because it would be boring to watch two Power Rangers mime on a couch what was going on. Well, if not then, when the Rangers are introduced... That's certainly an on-air montage. There's, yeah, an on-air, on-air montage with like narration of the Power Rangers journey. And it shows stuff that's just straight up lifted from earlier episodes. Oh, there's no way they could have ever gotten any of it on camera. There's like, no cameras One there. of the clips is Tommy swinging Saba at a putty. Yeah. Like, from the putty's point of view. Yeah. So the cameraman would have had to have been the putty. Yeah. It, uh, anyway. It's, it's so... There's so much of this is so thoughtless. Also, in those clips, uh, all the sound has been taken out and they've been redubbed. Yeah. Apparently because Saban didn't want to pay the three who'd left, like, the 30 cents or however much it would have been worth to have their voice used in the episode. Yeah. It's so dumb. How cool would it have been if we got to see some, like, man on the ground footage of the Power Rangers doing stuff that was captured? Yeah. Like, if they just reshoot some unimportant scenes for the episode from, like, a cameraman down in Alan's perspective, as he gets some fleeting glimpses of the Power Rangers. Yeah. But no, that's not what we get. No. So, <laughs> Harvey Garvey asks the viewers, or no, he asks the Power Rangers, if they can show the viewers how they do those incredible flying kicks. Sorry, but before we get to that, this punchy pig thing, they're using this as an example of how they were really smart. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, we realise he doesn't like spicy things, so we put some radishes in a sandwich and threw it at the pig. <laughs> What, did you learn that at radish class? <laughs> what, what class equipped you for that? It's not a good example. Of economics. Ah, that made me angry. And then Harvey Garvey, God, that's a stupid name, asks Tommy what happened to the Green Ranger. Yeah. And Tommy goes, ah, oh, it's sort of a long question, and I prefer to focus on the present. Why is he being so cagey about that? Well, I don't think he wants to say, well, the Green Ranger powers were evil. He doesn't need to. He needs to say, oh, it's me. I got some better powers. I mean, that would make sense. Rather than being like a dickish, like evasive bastard, like, oh, like, it's, it's such a PR answer. Yeah. You know, when it really doesn't need to be. He wasn't asking the secret identity. He was asking a pretty legitimate question. That's an actual interesting question that people watching might actually want to know. Yes. And he dodges it in favour of saying, cool kids stay in school. <laughs> So Harvey Garvey asked if they can show him how to do a flying kick. Yes. I was expecting like a flying kick. Yeah. As we've seen occasionally on this show. Yeah. Not like a jump kick. Yeah. But look, he falls on his ass. He does. That's uh, what to it. While all of this has been happening, we get a lot of bulk and skull behind the scenes. Yeah. Fucking around with like bags of weights and stuff. So their, their plan is ostensibly... They're going to drop some sort of sandbag on a Power Ranger's head that will stun them. Yeah. And then they'll be able to remove their helmets. Their helmets. Yeah. Okay, so let's cover the problems with this plan. Yeah. One, the sandbags are filled with feathers, as we see when one drops on Bulk's head. Yes. Head. Yes. Head. Yes. Yes. With feathers. Feathers are known for not being very heavy. <laughs> yes, they're defining feature. Three. They're light as a feather. Three. Why are the sandbags just hanging from the ceiling and not apparently weighing anything down? Yeah, they're not counterweighting anything. Four. Yeah. Why are there sandbags that hang above the guest chair? <laughs> because that sounds like a recipe for guaranteed disaster. Definitely. Five. Yeah. How did Bulk and Skull just get backstage? That was my pressing question. Because it's not like they bum rush the stage from the audience. No. They're hanging backstage for what has to be like 20 minutes. Yep. Fucking around with important stuff. And it's like, that that would be bad on a regular TV show. But on a national TV show where you have the Power Rangers, kind of a big deal, kind of important. Then at least the one incredibly frazzled production manager just going insane, making sure everything was going okay. And why do you not, like, if I hired, if like President Obama was coming to my show... Maybe I'd get some security. At least a guy. Uh, I mean, I think Obama comes with his own security. Yeah. And I feel like whatever rent-a-cop you're going to get, the Secret Service are probably going to be better. Definitely. But you at least make a token. Sure. Yeah. I respect you enough to put one guy. Um, But no, that doesn't happen. Uh, So, Lord Zed has given up on his original plan, creates a monster from one of the TV cameras in the studio, which... 
rolls away and into the city. So the thing Lord Zed says is, so the rangers like to clown around in front of the camera. And I think we both went, okay, a clown monster. Yeah. And he just makes a camera into a camera monster. Yeah. It's a weird, like, half a pun that doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. No. And when he steals one of the cameras, like, it's weird enough that it rolls away onto a city street with no one noticing. But presumably it was also filming the events that were going on. (laughs) But it doesn't seem to stop the broadcast, the fact that the camera went missing and turned into a monster. Um, it's strange. So, man, I have one question. The yeah. actor for Harvey Garvey. Yeah. How do you feel about him? Uh, no, I don't think very highly of him. Because he's going to come back to this show. What? Many times as a voice actor. Huh. But one particular time as a voice actor. Yeah. As Ninja. Really? Yes. That's fascinating. And that makes kind of sense. Now yes. that you said that. He's the right it. kind of guy. He's definitely got a big personality. Yeah. So, all right. That's cool. So there you go. That's like, your sneak peek at Ninja. I like Ninja. I know you like Ninja. Certainly more than Harvey Garvey. I don't know anything about Ninja. You're not very far away from finding I'm out. very excited to learn about Ninja. Yeah. That'll be good. Ah, I don't even know what a Ninja is. I, like I just know it's a really things. lazy name. Yeah. Like, he's a Ninja. What are we going to call him? ninja But, like, and I don't want to get too into it because we'll be covering it, but he is kind of like where ninja comes from. Basically. What? So what? It's not like just he's a ninja, like, including in like medieval Japan. Like that's, or... that's my belief. Yeah, because when they get ninja powers, they don't get some ninja powers. They get the power of ninja. Does this make sense? It doesn't make sense, <laughs> but it makes the right amount of not sense for this show. It's pretty good. So yeah, I get it. Oh boy, I can't I can't wait for Ninja now. That's gonna be a whole lot of bullshit to have to deal with then. It's pretty good. Alright. Uh, back to our, our current bullshit. Yeah, so uh, they go fight the monster, or they don't fight the monster, they fight some putties in front of the monster. We've got another season and a bit of this. It's starting to drive me up the wall. Sure. Because it leads to the worst episodes. The Rangers never get to fight the monsters as rangers. And for some reason even the Megazord battles are so bad. This one, in particular, yeah. takes less time than the transformation sequence of the Megazord. Much less time. They swing the sword maybe twice, and then the monster blows up. Yeah. It happens in seconds, which is a pity, because it's fucking gorgeous. It's this sunset, like, and everything's in silhouette. Even though that makes no sense, because we see scenes before and after it that are clearly in, in the just day. the regular daytime. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I did like... Tommy stays on the ground fighting Goldar. Yeah. Even while the Megazord fight is happening. Yeah. It's a nice solution to the problem we had last week, which was that the White Tiger Zord is not involved in the fight. Yeah. Last week he just summoned it and it didn't do anything. Yeah. This week he's just, okay, he's doing something. Everyone else can take care of the monster. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. The, the, yeah, they, they did solve it better than last week, so... Yeah. There's that, at least. Yeah, so back at school the next day, yep. Miss Appleby asks what people learned, and a dweeb called Jonathan says that if the Power Rangers think staying in school is cool, then so does he. You're a dweeb, Jonathan. I would just like to say that when Miss Appleby asks this question, basically everyone in the room puts their hands up, including Aisha, <laughs> who is a Power <laughs> Ranger. She shouldn't get to answer that question. I don't know that, Matt. I know, but it's just like you... Yeah, it just comes off as obnoxious. And then she calls on Rocky. (laughs) Oh, this is so weird. And Rocky says, I didn't write the exact line down, but it's like the Power Rangers, I think they reached out and touched all of us. No, he he said specifically, the Power Rangers really reached out and touched me. And because he knows that, you know, we're all Power Rangers, he has this weird smirk on his face, but it gives the line reading such a weird vibe. But it's not like... One of the other Power Rangers just like shook his hand, or act. It's not like a joke. No, it's just it's weird. It's weird. weird. And then Miss Applebee's like, "Oh, they actually reached out and touched a lot of people, metaphorically. Um, in fact, they reached out and touched some people in Switzerland, as I learned yes. by a fax." So this is amazing. She says she got a fax from Switzerland, yeah. And I think both of us were going like, well, "Why did they fax her?" Yeah, like she's just a middle school teacher in, I guess, the city that. The Power Rangers are from, but it doesn't really make a lot of... 
And then she reveals that the fact is from Jason, Trini, and Zach. Yeah. Which is nice. It was a moment where I was like, oh, that's really cool. I'm really interested to see what they have to say, which was a mistake. Yeah. I shouldn't have built that up for myself. I mean, they basically say, hey, we saw you guys on TV. Good that's job. Cool. Wish we hadn't left before we could have gone on TV, but oh well. Yeah. And that education is one of the most important things to world peace or something? It's a weird double barrel moral episode yeah. where the morals are television is good and school is good. And also a little world peace is good. And none of those morals are delivered with any kind of conviction or like... No, and it's not... Sometimes the show does an alright job of having the monster of the week be a little, like a metaphor for... Yeah. It. The issue. That's not the case here. No. It's not like they had to overcome the bad sides of television or whatever. No. There was just a camera monster and they punched it. Yep. Or cut it. Whatever. It blew up. So instead of there being a lesson to be learned or a story, there was just some things that were shouted at people and some explosions. Yeah. Which isn't a story. Yeah. It was a sequence of events with morals said but not learned. Yes, exactly right. So Bulk and Skull shot, we should mention... Bulk and Skull thought they were going to tackle the Power Rangers. They end up tackling Harvey Garvey. Yeah. So they're semi-famous now, which I guess you would be. If you tackled Conan at the end of one of his shows, your face would be on TV the next day. Yeah, in a mug show. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. So Bulk and Skull show up dressed like douchebags. Yeah. Uh, they've got, like, blue round sunglasses. They're all in matching, like, blue outfits. It's pretty, like... This- I did kind of find this kind of funny because they're, they're all, they've gone to Hollywood. Like, they have, yeah. they're wearing, like, silk and stuff like that and they walk into the classroom being like, oh, let's do lunch. Have my agent call your agent. <laughs> and uh, Skull's got a book of his autographs which he's selling. Yeah. To which a girl sitting in the front row just basically goes, what the, f-? like, you sit behind me all the time. You just go, shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Um, and then, I have to talk about this. Miss Appleby says for being 10 minutes late to class, they get a week of detention. Yeah. That seems like a lot of detention, given how often these two fuck up. Yeah. I don't think she needs to give them more than one detention. But maybe it's like they keep fucking up, so that's why it's getting increasingly harsh. Ten minutes is pretty late. That's not a small amount. I guess. Especially if the class is in the middle of the day, and it's not like you're late to school, you just were not in class for ten minutes. I guess. It just seems like a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. They're probably still in detention. Oh, definitely. Except we, we know they're not because they came cops and they went to space. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, like, they learned something. <laughs> right? It's just insane. It's like, of all the insanity about this show, Bulk and Skull become junior policemen, yep. get turned into monkeys, yep. one of them goes to space, yep. then the two of them briefly work at some sort of beachside resort run by Tommy, yep. then one of them comes back and is friends with some samurai. Yep. It's just... it's in, They just get fit into whatever role is yep. vaguely appropriate for them without any consideration of, like... How would those two feel about it? But in a lot of ways, it's kind of like their role is to be there, but never, like, be there for the Power Rangers, but never be Power Rangers. Yeah. And sort of from a, almost like a metaphysical level, like, their destiny is to be Power Power Rangers adjacent all the time, and the world just seems to, like, fold itself to reach that goal, no matter what happens. I feel like it's too late now, but if, like, 15 years ago, they could have gotten away with one of them becoming a Power Ranger. Yeah. And it would have actually been, like, nice and touching. It would have been a nice moment. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But no. They do get... They get a very nice moment kind of to that effect in Countdown to Destruction that I think was really the point that they should have left the show. But (laughs) But they didn't. They didn't. Well, Bob did. Well, no, he returned in small bits. Yeah, but mostly left the show. Yeah. Anyway, that was... That was Lights, Camera, Action. Yep. Uh, So on the... Rocky Aisha Adam scale. Yeah, that was a rocky. Yeah, it was a hard It was a very rocky That episode. was rocky bottom, I think. Yeah. You're very proud of yourself. So, right? Pretty proud. All right. Uh, so how about the Ranger Danger Creature feature? Yeah. Uh, speaking of rocky bottom, how far down can we put this, whatever his name was? It's camera still, Monster? It was it camera still monster? wasn't as bad as the Wheel of Misfortune. Uh, uh, look, I like the Wheel of Misfortune more than I like this thing. <laughs> really? Definitely. 
because the Wheel of Fortune, Miss Fortune, is interesting. This camera guy was the furthest you could possibly be from interesting. Okay, well, here's the thing. At the bottom of the list is the Wheel of Misfortune and then Scalarina. Yeah. Is it worse than Scalarina? Yeah, you know what? I'd even make it make him worse than Scalarina. Just because Scalarina had that weird three seconds of running through the forest. That like, Blair Witch Project shot. Yeah, which, like, wasn't good, but it was enough to make... I mean, also, the monster, and I don't think we mentioned, he's just called Showbiz Monster. Yes. Like, yeah, it's the worst. Everyone took a nap this week. Yeah. Okay, I'm comfortable putting Shobi's monster. Now that I've remembered how lazy his name is, yeah. even a cool name might have bumped him up a little. Yeah. But no, Shobi's monster goes at the bottom. Yeah. Above Tickle Sneezer and Goldar and the Dark Rangers, who will never leave the bottom. No. Especially Goldar after today. Jesus Christ. Whew. Yeah, so that was Lights Camera Action. Yeah. That was terrible. I'm. Actually, quite glad. As much as I hate to see the Thunder Megazord go, I'm glad we're going to be out of this season soon because it's kind of been. I don't know what the next Megazord is. I do. Like, I assume it's the a vague version of the one that's in the movie, but I well, also it's the real version of the one. In the movie. Sure, yeah. But I also don't remember the one in the movie enough to know. Like, I know that one of them is a frog, yeah, and I think one of them is like a crane. But I couldn't draw what the Megazord looks like. So that's going to be interesting. I'm very familiar with it. I, I do feel that it's a big come down from the Thunder Megazord. Right. Um, the Thunder Megazord is pretty good, though. It's like, well, it's my it's def- favourite. I think it's definitely top five. Yeah. I mean, one of them is a spaceship that becomes a giant robot. So I don't know that it's better than that. But that's but, not... You know, we can cover that way yeah. down the track. But yeah, the Thunder Megazord is my favourite. The Ninja Megazord is definitely not my favourite. But there's also some more Zords that season what? that I really like. So we'll get to that. Is there a Ninja Megazord? No, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't, You've raised your eyebrows, <laughs> so probably. But I don't want to know. Don't write in and tell me. Uh, all right. I guess that's it. Yeah. Uh, that was Lights, Camera, Action. We'll see you guys next week for yeah. what is hopefully a better episode. Uh, next week's episode is called Where There's Smoke, There's Fire. That's true. I assume it's some sort of fire monster. I hope so. And then after that, we don't have very long before we have a lot of big event multi-part episodes in a row, right? Yeah. That, so that'll kind of happen towards, I guess, September, October. Yep. When you guys are listening to it. Yep. So it's coming up pretty quickly now. Yeah. And it's then, exciting. Yeah, we've got sort of a few big multi-part episodes, and that's not too long before we hit season three. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week.